Well, hello there, Internet. Welcome back to another tutorial for beginningprogrammer.com. This time it's beginning C++, a quick primer, getting input and producing output. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is go to REPL IT, create a new session, and let's select C++. And we have Hello World created for us. We can run it and see that it produces Hello World. Then we want to use the namespace for standard out and, and standard in. And we can get rid of our prefix for C out. And you can see that it still works. Now we want to get input and we have to store that input in some kind of variable. So let's create an integer. And let's prompt the user for input. Now we want to receive the input and store it in user input. This stores the, the value uh, that the user enters into user input and we display what they input. So we go and enter a value and let's say 12 and it says you enter 12 and that is how you get input. Now something that trips people up is loops. So let's talk about loops. To do loops, you have to, you must have a condition. You have different types of loops. First type of loop that we'll look at is the do while loop. And the do while loop is very simple. You type do in the curly braces. And you can say any condition here that's true. You can say while user input greater than zero. And we can output the value. And notice that I have a body here for the loop. And anything that I put in here, it will output to the screen. So let's do C out. And let's just output the value. So let's output user input. And to make things interesting, let's increment user input. We can do user input like this, plus equal one, or we can say user equals user input plus one, and this increments the input. We want to actually decrement the input, so we say minus equal one, minus equal one, like this, and it'll decrement it. Or we can simply say minus minus. Let's go ahead and output that. And it'll stop when the value reaches zero. Enter a value. And it outputs all those values. Now we don't have a space in between them. So let's put a space so it can be a little bit clearer. And let's run it again. Enter a value. This time let's do something smaller like five. And you can see that we imp output five. So here we don't have a space because it's not separating the first one. And we want to do endo. And endo is so that you can have a return character. So let's try it again. Let's rerun it. Enter a value. Let's say 10. You enter 10 and it counts down from 10. So what if we wanted to count up? This time, let's count up with a while loop. Instead of a do while, we do a while. This time, we say while user input is less than 10. And this loop here executes at least once, and then it checks the condition and if the condition is, when the condition is false, it executes. That could even happen on the first try. The while loop is different because the condition may be false to begin with and the loop never gets executed. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So we type C out, user input. And 
and we increment this time because we know we reached zero with input so let's increment user input and as long as it's less than 10 it'll print everything out so let's go ahead and run it before we do that let's put an endo here so it'll separate the output let's put a new line and let's do the output and let's see what it does we enter a value let's say 10 and this it counted down from 10 and then it counts up from zero but remember it's less than 10 we can say less than or equal to and it would count all the way up to 10. so let's do 10 again and you can see it counts down all the way to one then it counts from zero all the way up to 10. the next kind of loop is a for loop and the for loop let's get some space down here so we can actually see it this time we have a for loop the for loop is a little bit interesting and it may look confusing to you but it's really not the for loop you must initialize a value so we can say we'll declare an integer i and we'll set it to user input or we can initialize it to zero so that's our first condition we can say for i equals zero and then this is the sort of the while in our statement and we can say while i is greater than zero since we counted all the way up to 10 with the user input we can say while user input while i is greater well i is less than user input and it's going to go all the way up to 10. and then finally the last statement we increment the index and we do the same thing we output the value <clears throat> and we don't have to increment anything here because we are using i for zero and i is less than user input and i plus plus and <clears throat> in reality we don't want to do the user input we want to do i we want to display what's in i and then to finish it off we do another c out for endo and let's run it and see what it produces enter a value 10. <clears throat> one thing we forgot on this loop is C out endo so we can separate it and what we can do here is we can say for loop we can say C out endo and then we can say for loop and I have a bad habit of saying count instead of C out and we can just say this is the for loop for loop and we do another endo here and we can do the same thing for while And we can do the same thing for do while. And let's take a look. Enter a value. And there you have the different types of loops. They all get you the result of repeating a process all inside the body you notice that this has a body we could do additional things in this body as long as it's inside this body we can do additional things for example we could say C out I times two for example and put a space and you notice that in the for loop it's going to give us a different result You notice that in the for loop, oops, we misspelled for loop. So in the for loop, it's multiplying the value times two. Zero times zero is zero. One times two is two. Two times two is four, and so on. You can continue adding these things. I hope you learned something out of this. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. If you like it, go ahead and like it. If you don't like it, please leave your comments below. If you have any questions, leave your comments below. 
and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Until next time.